All right. I want to start. I want to start our conversation today with a cautionary tale. As we saw so clearly during the pandemic, the businesses that evolved and adapted didn't just survive; they thrived. But the businesses that didn't adapt and do so quickly did not. But before we dive too deep into the future, let's take it back to what may, may seem like the prehistoric days. Not that far back, but we're going to just take it back to the 90s. Let's just imagine for a second. It's a Friday night, so you order some Domino's. Yeah, as you head over to your neighborhood blockbuster video, remember those? Browse the new releases section, and you grab the last copy of Pulp Fiction because you're a badass mother. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and you're ready to party like it's 1999. Blockbuster had it all. They had us in their hands. But Blockbuster did not survive because it failed to evolve. It failed to evolve into the world of online streaming. In fact, in the year 2000, they even had the chance to buy Netflix for just 50 million dollars. Today, Netflix is worth about 80 billion dollars. I haven't checked today. <laughs> But Blockbuster was, neighbor, was just not able to evolve. And what Netflix offered us. That traditional cable networks didn't, and no, neither Blockbuster did, was choice, choice of not just what to watch, but when and where to watch it. And they gave us control and how to control that user experience, how to control the viewing experience ourselves. All of us here are in this room because we care deeply about the customer journey and the experience. Ultimately, we're all the builders and the designers of their roads. And we know that aside from having a great product or service, the key to conversion is to create a seamless, you know, beautiful customer journey that gets the consumer from point A to point B as easily and frictionlessly as possible. Like Amazon did by helping us remove friction points, like dealing with difficult returns, or Uber, all along the way of how you get a cab, how you hail a cab. Uh, when they show up, how clean it is, how you pay them, they remove friction points, and it's completely transformed the way that we shop and do business and transport ourselves. And so today, I want to talk to all of us here, to all you, about how we, as sales leaders, as marketers, as support leaders, as product builders, can build a more frictionless future where everybody wins. I'm David Tall. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Verse. Seen here. With my beautiful family,、uh, we're from San Diego. Go San Diego! Stay classy. Our mission is to elevate the world's consciousness. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a WeWork joke. Just making sure you guys know that. Sorry, Adam Newman, if you're in the crowd. Our real mission is to modernize how businesses communicate with their customers, and every year. Verse powers tens of millions of conversations between some of the nation's leading brands that we all interact with,、uh, you know, every year, and and with consumers and helping them to create efficiencies in that funnel and how they communicate, how they engage, how they qualify them at scale. And so I'm here to share with you today some of what we have found that works, what doesn't work, and hopefully some tips that you can take with you on your journeys back home to implement and improve everything in your own, you know, funnels. And yes, we're a sponsor here, but I'm not here to shamelessly plug Verse. Although we are in booth 401, <laughs> if you just go down the entrance, you'll see us right on the right. You can't miss them. Tell them David sent you. <laughs> well, let's get serious. The key to conversion is conversations. Conversations build relationships, and relationships win business. All too often, we're talking about leads, 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 but leads are just leads. We hope they lead to a conversation, and so we truly believe at Verse that conversations are the new leads, and we should really be measuring everything through the viewpoint of how many people, not just how, how many leads we're generating for our teams, but how many conversations we're sparking with our teams. That's the most important metric because the conversations will build the relationships that will win the business. But before we go down too deep down the rabbit hole, I want to take it back to my favorite decade one more time. Yes, the 90s. I was a super nerdy little boy <laughs> who loved Legos. That was way too loud of a laugh.、Um, I love Legos. I played with them for countless hours, and I don't like to brag, but、uh, I won multiple Lego competitions. So I was even a card-carrying Lego maniac. 
That was a thing. That was a card. I had it. It was laminated. And my bar mitzvah, my theme, was, you guessed it, Legos. And I made my poor innocent guests have to meander and walk through my exhibit. I, I built every Lego I think I had. And they had to walk through it and ooh and ah and pretend they cared. Uh, just to get into the hall and have you know, access to the bar and the food and the dancing. So as evidenced by this photo and the others, I was super cool. And obviously the ladies loved it. My wife today, not as much. But I lived in one of those homes that had a phone attached to the wall with a cord on it that felt like it was 14 feet long. Raise your hand, show of hands, who had one of those in their homes growing up? Whoa. All of you who didn't raise your hands, look at all the old people near you. <laughs> Try to be kind and gentle as you walk by them. Be respectful. But when that phone rang, it was exciting. It could be your grandmother. It could be the doctor. It could be your best friend. It could be the school calling. It usually was important. And you rushed to go pick it up. And yes, there was spam and there were some telemarketers here and there. But for the most part, it was a rush to pick up that phone. Things are so different now, aren't they? It's totally different. Now, my phone vibrating in my pocket or ringing brings me more anxiety than joy. I think it does for everyone here. It, it, it annoys you even. It distracts you. It frustrates you. My best friend, Spam Likely, has probably called me eight times now, <laughs> just, just since I've taken the stage, which reminds me I need to call him back. But now we're just flooded with telemarketers, with spam from all different directions, and it's, everyone's just raised their guard because of it. Everyone has just raised their guard. And so it's no wonder that 87% of people just do not answer the phone anymore from numbers that they don't know. They're over it. They're not answering. We all know that. We don't answer it. And it's also because over half of the calls we do receive are not even wanted. So not only is it that we prefer to communicate by text with people we do know, but even half the people who call us, over half, we don't even want those calls. It's spam, it's telemarketing, it's things we're not interested in. We didn't raise our hand for it. And so this, the rise of smartphones really has changed everything. It's connected us in exciting new ways. From right here, I could be looking at a webcam of a polar bear in the Arctic, you know, being in the back of an Uber that I ordered from my phone while, I don't know, ordering Postmates to where I'm going next while checking my heart rate, all, all from my, my phone. Amazing. But at the same time, it's funneled in all these different distractions all into one central device, and it's noisy. And so if you're a marketer and someone raises their hand and says, I am interested, I want to know more about this product, this service, I want a demo, I want a quote, whatever it may be, how do you compete with all of that noise? It's like being in a loud bar yelling at somebody, trying to get their attention, but they can't hear you because you're standing right in front of the speaker. I'll tell you what you don't do, is keep yelling. Did you guys hear about the missing hiker that went lost in the mountains of Colorado? He was hiking, he went radio silent for about 24 hours, and his family freaked out and panicked, they sent out search and rescue teams looking for him, scouring the mountainsides. Thank God, finally, about a day later, they, you know, he made his way back to his car. He found, he found his way back. And authorities were waiting for him and his family. Oh, my God, thank God. And, and the search teams were, you know, how, how are you? Are you okay? What happened? We called you dozens of times. The hiker responded. He thought it, they were spam calls, so he didn't answer them. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. So even, <laughs> even stranded hikers do not want to take your unwanted phone calls, everybody. I'm sorry to break it to you. thought they were spam. I laughed for a good 10 days straight after this story came out. Still do a little. Email is losing some steam too. Don't get me wrong. Email is extremely important and powerful and we need it for different kinds of things and for content and for different notifications, etc. And communication as well. But for instant customer engagement, it's not the most powerful tool there is anymore. Only 22% of email messages are opened. And as an industry, a lot of us think that's, that's good, but that's a low bar. Compare that to SMS, which has 98% open rate, 98. 
90% of the messages are read within three minutes, where emails can take days or, or hours or days for people to read. And so email's important, it's a part of the overall strategy, but for instant customer engagement, it's losing steam. We're in an entirely new world now. We're in the age of the modern consumer. And as the leaders who are building these journeys and experiences for these consumers, we must meet the modern consumer with modern approaches to engagement that are authentic and efficient and genuine and respectful. And we need to stop wasting everybody's time. Not just the time of the consumers who don't want our unsolicited calls and emails, etc., but also of our own teams who are still using old, ineffective and inefficient ways of cold calling and reaching out endlessly causes low morale. And it's why the average salesperson only makes 1.2 attempts to reach out to somebody before they completely move on to the next opportunity coming down the pipeline. There's a fatigue about it. And so how do we strike conversations? How do we actually get conversations going? I'm going to get into this, but you know, at, at Verse, we tested this, right? We have, you know, millions of conversations, so we can test this at scale. And we, text, we tested um, email, we, test, we tested phone calling as well. If we tested SMS. We didn't, text, we didn't test, I keep saying text, see, that's how much it's in my head. We didn't test faxing, but if we thought it would work, maybe we would try it. Maybe we'll bring the fax back, still hope. But by and large, the most effective way to engage with customers that we have found is through SMS. I think we all know it here today. We all prefer it. 90% of us prefer to communicate by text, initially with a business. It's easier. It removes friction. You know who it is when they're texting you. You can respond on your time and on your terms and control your own kind of conversation or communication experience. And I'm going to get to an example or two, but before that, I, I was a real estate broker right after college, after a few failed attempts at other things. Notice the money tie. It was very expensive. And I had a team of agents. And this is where I first really learned a lot of this. I had a team of agents, sales agents, right, real estate agents, and I would generate leads from sites like Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, et cetera, and feed my sales agents, just like a lot of us here marketing, trying to feed our, our salespeople you know, opportunities. I found out very quickly how terrible my agents were at following up with leads. At, they were extremely inconsistent. Everyone was different from one another. They did it completely differently on different times, different strategies, different scripts, everything. Some people called, some people left a voicemail, uh, almost nobody texted, and, uh, and people were emailing. But when we did start testing text, it worked instantly. Almost immediately, people started responding to us. And so I learned this, you know, kind of on the job, and this became the seeds of what became Verse Today because we realized that we could bring the power of SMS to help not just real estate agents or brokers, but every industry that generates leads and has sales teams, they need to feed them with qualified opportunities. And so I want to talk to you about the future conversations and where I think it's all really going. Because for the last couple of decades, we've been using marketing automation as a method to engage with prospects, right, and, and get their attention. So user, customer, fills out a form, does activity A or B, whatever it is, triggers a sequence, a drip of emails that just goes out. And they're basically one-way messages. It's your side of the story. It's content. It's different kinds of information. Someone raises their hand and we're giving them a, a book. The, that's, that's one way. The future, the future is two-way. It's instantly launching conversations the moment people raise their hand, instantly. They raise their hand, instantly start talking to them. No reason to send them a drip. Start talking to them right away. The old way is one way. The future is two way. The problem though is that people are really trying to solve this by one of two ways, either all through technology or all through people, human power. But technology alone is limited, it's cold, it's inauthentic, it has its limitations. But humans alone, people alone, are expensive, are inefficient, 
are hard to train, hard to hire, hard to manage. Sorry, people. It's true. And so we truly believe that the future of customer engagement is bridging the best of AI with the best of people to create superhuman experiences at any scale. So how do we put this in action? I'm going to show you an example here from SunPower. SunPower Solar, one of the biggest solar companies in America. So Kelly fills out a form on SunPower, right? She wants a quote. She wants a quote for solar like millions of Americans are doing today. Uh, looking for solar. I went through this exact experience a few months ago. And by the way, I went with the first company that got back to me. Why wouldn't you? No one wants to have endless interviews. You just want to go with the first competent person who gets back to you. So Kelly fills out a form, and usually she may be getting just calls for days from different companies, right? And she's not picking up. 87% of Kelly's are not picking up. So this may seem like a relatively simple text, but I just want to break it down to you and show you what's important about it and what, what, what it's made up of. First off, it's got speed. Speed to lead, which is speed to relationship, speed to conversation. We can instantly send this. We can automate this. We can send it immediately. Secondly, it has relevance. Who is this? What is this for? Why are you reaching out to me? Compare that to a phone call. Phone is ringing from a number you don't know. You have no idea what world you're about to enter if you make the mistake of answering that phone call. You have no idea. You have no idea who it is, what it's about. With text, you have instant, instant context. This is Alex with SunPower Solar, and this is about your quote. And lastly, and most importantly, choice. You're giving the consumer choice, not forcing them to pick up a phone call the moment you're ready to talk, but allowing them to control that experience themselves. How do they want to communicate? Do they want to call? Fine. Maybe they're one of the 10% that want to call. Fine. Great. You can give them a call then or ping your team or, or schedule the call. And now they're actually ready for it, expecting it, and we'll pick it up. And our studies show that they will pick up the, the phone 94% of the time if it's initiated over SMS first. But for the 90% of people who say they want to text, you can instantly just start having that conversation over SMS right away, giving them choice. As I mentioned, 90% of texts are read within three minutes. And so we have to enable people to have conversations with our businesses over text. And it's 42 times faster engagement than email, 42 times. So again, email is important, but for customer engagement, nothing beats SMS. If it did, that's entirely what Verse would be doing. Verse is here, and, and everything that we do is about powering more and more authentic engagement at scale. We're not just trying to promote SMS. Whatever works in the future is what we'll do. So what do you do about after hours leads? Almost half of our leads are coming in after hours. And most people don't do almost anything with them. They wait till the next day for the teams to call them. Or they send an automated drip. But people can have conversations all, all throughout the day, 24-7. We know this firsthand. Not everyone has a 9 to 5 like we do. And when we're working 9 to 5, it doesn't mean they're ready to talk to your business 9 to 5. Guess what? They're working too. They have their own business. And usually they get home from work, they put the kids to bed, and now they're ready to look for homes online, look for a mortgage, look for solar, look for insurance, look for healthcare options, etc. Let's talk about Zoom for a minute. Can you guys imagine the last couple of years without it? Zoom has transformed the way that we work and meet with our teams. The last couple of years we've been Zoom dating, Zoom drinking, Zoom getting married. But where was Zoom just a few years ago? Most of us think of Zoom and you're like, well, it's always been around. But actually, most people, when we survey them, most people had never heard of Zoom just a few years ago. Why did they win the race? There were other tele, you know, video conferencing solutions. They didn't invent it. There was GoToMeeting, there was Cisco WebEx, there was Skype. Who here cringes if they get a Microsoft Teams invite? That's a lot of hands. And it's no, nothing against Microsoft, it's just, harder, it has more friction to the experience. Zoom won the race because they removed more friction than anybody else. And we can just glide through. And we all just, just naturally um, um, you know, funneled our way there because it was easier. It was easier to download. It was easier to set up. Easier to invite your grandmother to it. Right? Can't invite your grandmother to a Microsoft Teams. Can you imagine? And they also continued to evolve. Right? Filters. They knew people looked terrible. 
uh, in their pajamas all day. So they gave us filters, thank goodness. My good friend Chuck always used to tell me, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the most adaptable to change. We have to continue to evolve our strategies and kind of keep up with the consumers of the day. We have to continue to do so. And so in closing, you know, none of us could have predicted the events of the last couple of years. It's none of us could have. It's been nothing short of, you know, frustrating, stressful, and entirely all too often heartbreaking. But at the same time, it's kicked open the doors to new opportunities like never before. Think of remote work as an example. Could have taken a decade or two longer for the world to come to accept this new normal, right? And it accelerated it faster than ever before to the point where it's not just accepted, it's expected, right? But as we continue to integrate exciting new technologies into our business and evolve ourselves and our businesses alongside it, let's never forget the power of the human touch. The reason we're doing this all in the first place is to empower the lives and the journeys for the consumers that we're serving every single day to make their lives a little easier, a little better, easier to navigate, less roadblocks, less friction along the way, letting them get to point, from point A to B easily and seamlessly. Because at the end of the day, we're all the end users of the experiences that we're creating as well. So we need to be and build the change that we want to see in the world. And remember, connection and conversion always start with conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you.